What is up my ninjas? I am Strident and welcome back to another video. It has been a little while. So oftentimes we talk about as uh, reviewers whether or not there is a such thing as a perfect figure. And one of the things that you guys hear often is that there is no such thing. I spend a lot of time thinking about it because I own several examples, you know, and then sometimes I go back and I look at those figures and I'm like, are they really perfect or am I exaggerating? And then I go back and I look at them and I think about things and I think about their, their uh, strengths and their weaknesses. And I think about the fact that as a toy, it can only do so much. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it's a toy. It's supposed to have limitations. Um, and within those limitations, does it do everything that it sets out to do? And I found myself on multiple occasions with a resounding yes. So then today, I've decided to sit down and review another figure, something I've been looking at for a long time, but it is in line with a, uh, a line that I've been collecting for a while, here and there, you know, I cherry pick. And it is going to be another example of, uh, potentially, an example of a uh, perfect figure. Um, and you guys know what I'm talking about when you see who it is. I mean, you've, you've already clicked, so you have an idea of who it is. Um, but you know from past experience that almost every single time I have reviewed a figure of this character, there is a certain pedigree that is always met. And you know, so far, I've, I've reviewed a lot of figures that I'm collecting uh, in the last couple years, and there haven't been as many perfect ones, you know, to compare to, but this one definitely is a blueprint in all the things that you need to do in order to start talking that kind of talk. You know what I'm saying? And again, you guys can do the comparison if you want against previous ones, but uh, previous perfect figures or previous figures that I gave this, uh, this, you know, moniker, this rating to. But I just want to go through and show you because, you know, despite what you hear all across the board, you know, when you come here, I give you the truth objective clear straightforward no bullshit so today we're going to take a look at someone that you guys have seen you haven't seen in a long time but he is here and uh th this was a fairly expensive figure so i'm kind of feeling to myself like you better be worth the money and uh i think you will be i've probably already given it away but you'll be surprised with the results so let's get into it Today we're taking a look at Superior Imaginative Coliseum, Common Rider 555 Fies. So where to begin? Okay, so this guy here is one of those figures. He's my favorite of the Heisei era Common Riders. The design the motif you know him being you know based around modern technology the color scheme everything works and here all those details that i already love are kind of buffed you know what i mean like they're they're they're, they're moved up and kind of put on display to the max to make him look super super like just amazing and super interesting and like Nothing is lacking in terms of your paint. There is no slop, not a single solitary piece of slop on this figure. Um, unlike the original though, they, he doesn't have very much die cast anywhere. I, th I, I think he doesn't even have any die cast whatsoever. He's all plastic and, and it works. I don't really have a problem with that. Um, the red is this beautiful metallic almost candy apple red and uh the the yellow orange in his visor is just beautifully uh, uh presented as you can see with the uh 
the black. It's like a, a, a matte finish. He doesn't have that toyetic shininess that you typically get. Instead, it has more of a, uh, I don't know, like I said, a muted matte finish to it. As you move down within his chest and whatnot, you can see that even in the candy apple red, there's like a fleck to it. It's not just red. It, it, it's like you, you can see that where light hits, it, it, it absorbs some of that light and it goes throughout, you know what I mean? The light kind of disperses throughout that, that red. And that all, all that detail, all that paint, all that awesomeness flows all the way through to the back. I mean, nothing is missing. Even the, uh, the phone itself, the, the Fi's driver, beautiful beautiful even the little mission memory it looks beautiful um on the sides you can see what i'm talking about on his glove it goes from red to like a slight orange bronzy color as it moves up towards his elbow same on his feet i mean it's just a masterful paint job the likes of which you never see in the united states on domestic figures um and then even the fact that the details, the angular details have been kind of exaggerated. <sighs> Shit. It just is fucking amazing to watch. It's just amazing to see on your shelf. It's amazing to even play with because it looks this damn good. All right, now I'm doing something different here. You know me, typically I don't talk about the package because I don't give a shit. But <clears throat> this package is so well done, I had to talk about it. Number one, the image on the front is beautiful and the way it kind of fades into the black, it's just, it's nice. The fact that there's the artist's signature and everything on there and the names of the artist who sculpted and painted the figure, that's a, a super plus because it's, being treated more like a piece of art and less like a you know mass uh, retail figure on the back we still have more of that beautiful artwork beautiful photography showing off some of the gimmicks showing off detailing uh, showing off the figure and as you can see you know it does have that quality where it kind of fades into black as you go further back into the background from the foreground but it's just so straightforward and it works um, and I, I still have to give props to Yoichi, Sakamoto, and Koma, which uh, they, they did an amazing job taking over from uh, Takayuki Takeya and uh, Kenji Ando. Um, they did amazing work on their previous versions of various SIC figures, but this one, whew, this one, it, it's just, it's just, it's immaculate. But it's nice to see, again, you know, that the artists their names are being put on display because I mean with a lot of figures we don't know who sculpted them and when they do something to this degree it makes sense for the company to be putting their artistry kind of their name out there in the forefront with the figure itself so that you know who did it you know but uh yeah you see the new name superior imaginative coliseum previously it was super imaginative chokogen talking about the uh the metal there's no metal in here but they still achieve the same level of detail and then also this beautiful slip cover ish type of deal slip box type deal where you you slide out a sliding box i guess is what it's called a uh, uh, container you pull it out you see the tray and you see all the details all the things that are inside and it's just like you know you're about to get something special because of this whole presentation presentation sometimes is so important to these huge these are these are what I call like milestone figures. These are the figures that like you you collect all the other shit and then you come to this one and you're like, holy shit, daddy's home. You know what I'm saying? Like, daddy just took off his belt, he's about to whoop everybody's ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like games are it's no more games. This is the real deal right here. This is not just something you can play with, but this is like artistry, like raw artistry granted it's kind of it's it's pretty damn commercial obviously because it's of a common rider and they're created to sell uh you know merchandise but this here is respect for the character the design and all the little details that go into it and i'm all here for it you know what i mean like this is the way it should be and more companies need to take their cues from this
All right, an awesome figure is not an awesome figure if it can't do the things you need it to do. So let's get into the articulation. All right, so articulation is pretty cool. I'm only going to point out the stuff that's different, the stuff that's not common on other figures. Um, let's start out by talking about the overall construction. Overall, ball joints, shoulder ball joints, ball joint at the head. You have a, a ball joint up here as well as down here at the neck. So you get the neck movement. You see the neck moving. And then you have the top, the head itself moving. Look up that much. Look down that much. It's freaking dope, right? The shoulder. Rotation at the shoulder. It's a series of ball joints with the actual gap. Uh, I mean, actual butterfly joint. Everything's so tight on this guy. See that? Actual butterfly. So if I want his arms way back, like so, you can do it. You know? Is flying forward, and I wanted to make it look dramatic. I could actually do that. See that? Um, of course, to get his chest. So you have a bicep swivel, of course, right here. Double jointed elbow. You have to be careful. You see that notch? You can turn this so that you can take advantage of that, that notch and get a proper bend. So you can actually like block properly if someone was throwing a punch at him, like, Ugh, you can block it. Um, this is how far over his chest he gets. I'm not gonna make him dab, I promise. I don't I don't need to do that. We already got a keeper red for that, but look at that. This looks so good. Can do those those cool posters they tend to do. looks so good there's this little flap here that moves the um, shoulder pad on its own it's on a series of joints see that And that covers up the gap right there. Um, like I showed you before, you have the bicep swivel, swivel at the glove, swivel at the hand. The hand is on a hinge, so you can move it wherever you turn it, you can move the hand that way. See? Um, that's awesome. The same uh, situation with the the head and the neck is the same. Oh, I'm sorry. Before we get there, the way this opens up, you have a series of joints. See that? And they swivel, they bend, and they come out pretty easily so that you can get off the, um, the actual, you know, exposure of this right here. And then this one up here swivels. See that? So for the transformation, you have to swivel it all the way out. 
and then you turn this and you you do all that so that's articulation right there and it's crazy because once it it gets into its place once everything is where it's supposed to be you don't have to worry about it popping out of place stays exactly where I need it look no indication that anything is is moving with this I love it um let's see uh oh so what I was saying earlier the same situation with the neck and the head is the same situation with the torso and the waist you've got a ball joint up here and you've got sculpt in there so that when it's moved see when it's down you don't see it but when he looks up you reveal that then you have a ball joint down at the bottom of his waist and you also have that at the top so he can <clears throat> just kidding um and then he can twist and it's anatomic it's anatomical so he looks correct when you have him walking he doesn't really go very much past that you, you see that I'm forcing it I'm not gonna force it anymore but you see I've twisted it it's very natural because that's the point they want this to be natural the legs you have a whole bunch of cool things going on in here ball joint at the hips but it's like a compound ball joint Ooh, sorry compound ball joint see that in there it, it bends a little but he can do the splits me better he's a fucking common rider so he can do the splits with no problem I can do the splits no problem perfect um, front and back front that much back not as much because he has the butt pad but I mean realistically if you're gonna do a back kick you just turn the waist and kick back and then take advantage of that split um, there is a thigh swivel and then there's this extra piece to cover up any gappage see that so no matter where I go it covers it up I love it I love it, I love it, I love it, and look at all that beautiful shiny paint going up through it. That's called photon blood in the show, and usually it lights up as he's doing stuff. You know, it's kind of like how your striations of muscle ripple and move around and do stuff and pulsate sometimes. Like if you're having a spasm, it'll pulsate, but if you're like, you know, struggling to do something, you're putting in all your, 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 your strength to do something, your muscles will kind of pulsate sort of. It's, it's to emulate that on a technical level. I love it because it looks great. And then when I'm even explaining it, it just sounds cool. Um, the belt itself is its own piece, so it can move out the way. It is attached in the back right here. There's like a hinge or a peg or something holding it in place, so it doesn't move any. It doesn't separate from the crotch. Um, the uh, phone has articulation so it can open up actually let me just open it a little bit more so you guys can see that um, the where were we oh knees no twist at the uh, above the knee but he does have double jointed knees um, there is no boot cut because this is not a traditional boot shape, but there is a ankle and you kind of, you can kind of, uh, no, nah, not really. It's all down here. And this thing is floating. This piece right here floats. So when you move him, it moves with him. If you use the, this is on a ball joint. So if you want to. Is it a ball joint? It feels like a ball joint. Am I wrong? No, I'm not wrong. It's a ball joint in there. 
there's a ball joint in here, so you can move this in, in all the different directions. And he has toe articulation as well. So it works really well because when you put him down on the ground, you put him in a, getting ready to do something. See how his feet kind of plant the way they're supposed to? And it never feels like he's not flat. His feet aren't flat on the ground. So, you get that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, there's your articulation for the this figure for Fies. SIC Fies. It's just just dope. There's there's really nothing more I can say, man. He just man. So, you know, long story short, there's not much that this guy can't do that I would want him to do, you know? And I love it. I think that makes this, you know, that much more enjoyable. So, moving along. <laughs> So, you know, I have a ton of uh, Fi's figures and, you know, Fi's merchandise, but I figured this is time for us to compare them so you can see where the design elements come from. So, volume 28, this was the first SIC version that I picked up. I had wanted this thing for a long time. It was a grail of mine for many years. Um, what makes him very, you know, different from other figures is the amount of metal, die cast metal that's used on this figure. His feet. Um, the Fi's gear and all the attachments are metal. Um, then they shrunk him down and it's like the same exact sculpt, same exact detail, still part of the SIC family, but this is called the uh, SIC Kiwami Tamashi version. And again, nothing was lost detail wise when they shrunk this down. That's why when you hear American, you know, reviewers that, that stick to American figures talk about at that scale this is awesome at that scale it's like you don't even know what you're talking about there's no limitation and there hasn't been for a long time with the amount of detail that you can you know achieve at either scale i mean look at the compound eyes on both of them it's still there he's a little faded because he's old but i mean what the fuck big difference on these two is the paint um and now before them I had the standard SH Figure Arts one, which this is the way that Fies appears in the series, you know, and that's what SH Figure Arts was always good at, was trying to be screen accurate, you know. The other two were artist renditions, like reimaginings, like uh, like big budget, almost a horror movie esque kind of feel to them. Then there's a Super RHF, which was a slightly larger. That's the the other one you see on the the right hand side. Uh, that looks more like the figure arts one that was a bigger more kid-friendly version he has less attachments has those movable hands that a lot of people tend to like I'm not a big fan of those and he came with autovagin but as you can see at all the different scales with the newest uh, SIC being the biggest of the bunch you you don't lose anything the the integrity of the design is still there um, they all come with the same weapons and everything. It's just that the bigger SIC ones come with more. The move, the the screen accurate, show accurate SH Figure Arts one comes with like all the things. But you can kind of see the evolution. You know, you can see what they were looking at, where they chose to kind of go in and add more detail and expand on these elements that make up the character design. And then you can see how they even went further and streamlined all that with the newest SIC. And I'm fucking in love, man. This shit is amazing. I mean, just, man. All right. Accessories. SIC figures always come with a ton of accessories. Just like I explained earlier when doing the comparison, 
you know, Figuarts had a lot of accessories, but the SIC had a lot of them, and there's interchangeability as well as functionality between the accessories because that's literally how they operate on screen. So let's get into these accessories. A lot of them you've seen before if you've seen the previous Fi's reviews because it's the same stuff. It's just how it's handled here. There's a slight difference to it. You know, obviously there's the design elements that are slightly different. And then there's, you know, bigger things. But look at all that. That's what came in the package with this figure. And, you know, it had the asking price that it did with the sculpt and the articulation that we got. But but when you see all the functionality that you get in this package, it's like, fuck, I can see why this thing go it goes for, you know, 80 to 100 bucks just off rip. Um, now, unlike the previous SICs, there's no die cast. Um, everything's plastic, but it's a tough kind of plastic. It's not even that brittle shit that I've come to expect from these guys. It's actually a little tougher than that. Some of it's really light, like the the Fies, the phone itself, the gear, um, and then the the you know some of the attachments. These are all the attachments that are going to be used in some of the weapon combinations that you'll see when I get into the weapon combinations. <laughs> Um, he does come with three pairs of hands. You know, you got the holding things hands, fists, and then the gun holding things hands. Um, then you have all the individual pieces, you know, the individual weapons themselves, some of which have two pieces so you can achieve different modes. So the Fi's driver. This is the phone and the belt and the two attachments on the sides. It looks great. You can actually take the phone out of the belt and you can see all the little detail in the back. Uh, the phone fits snugly in there. You don't need to do anything to get it to hold on like I had to do with the previous one because the phone itself was die cast and it was heavy as shit. Um, it used to fall out. You don't have to do that. Um, here's the Fize Gear case. I wanted to get this out the way quickly because this is this thing here. We're going to go into this in detail, but almost all the Fize figures I have even the the villains all came with a case a smart brain uh, case of some sort and in the show that's how they receive their gear in a case and when you open up the case there's like the dis display setup so you can see you know the, the belt and the driver or the driver gear system you know this little weird one is a Sochak Henshin case all of the Sochak Henshin figures that I had I think all of them came with the case because I have a couple more of these. Um, it's it's weird because it's almost as if they didn't expect you to stand it up. Um, and you can always tell that it's more of a kid-oriented thing because it's not very display friendly. It's more set up for you to play with it. You can open it up and put the gear in there. These two are SIC. You can tell by the kind of ashy, dirty, grimy looking uh, paint job. Um, and then, of course, you have the big one, which came with the new SIC uh, Fies. Um, you can see that the tech detail is built all into this case. Now, the other cases all open up. I had the um, gears all on the figures, so with the exception of that, it's an extra gear that came with Delta. Um, they're all busy. But anyway, the phone, like I said, for the standard one, it's it's movable it does it, it opens you can keep it open when it's on his belt in the gear or you can close it up and there's a lot of detail that goes in there now I, I jumped to the phone because I figure we need to focus on this thing proper because it can do a lot of things the Fi's phone itself has this piece that you see removed there called the mission memory and uh, I'm gonna get to that one later on as well this is phone blaster mode when you uh, kind of transform the phone so that he can shoot things now it actually transforms you don't have two separate phones when you attach the Fi's uh, pointer to the phone you end up <laughs> with the variable light bullet gun phone blaster like this is so Japanese it's ridiculous you know but it looks great and this is something you've seen in other uh, iterations this is the Fi's pointer. I figure since we mentioned how it works with the phone, I may as well talk about it by itself. This is the piece that usually freezes an enemy in place while he jump kicks and you know hits him with his rider kick. Um, now you see that little area for the mission memory. 
And that's what we're getting into right now, mission memory. That's what comes off the phone. Now, for the rest of these different transformations, I do not remove the mission memory because that thing is tiny and it falls and my carpet likes to eat tiny shit. So I did this picture so you guys can see it functionally works exactly the way that you saw it work in the show. Um, you can replace the bottom of the pointer with a uh, extended piece. You just pull this piece out and then push the extended piece out. In the show and on the origin the other SIC, you just pull it and it, it telescopes. Um, and then you attach that to the piece on his right leg, um, like right ankle or shin, the side of his shin. And you can see the little peg hole there. You attach that and then uh, he is all set to jump up and deliver some rider justice with that beautiful kick. Next we have the Fize shot. Now this, it looks like a CD player. They had a different explanation for it in, in the wiki and stuff like that. But in the show, it, it, it looks like a CD player. It's actually essentially a, a, a special form of like teched out brass knuckles. You can also see the spot for um, the mission memory as well. And I have to stress how small the mission memory is because though I did definitely take pictures, playing with that and like putting that in there just for the pictures, that thing bounced around my desk and my carpet tried to eat it multiple times. It's, it's a hassle to remove and, and they don't give you multiples in this release. Now the previous SIC ones and the autovagin that comes with the blaster mode has multiple mission memories so that if you lose one you have an extra. But anyway, this is where he jumps up and uh, you know it, it adds to his punching strength. It's, it's like, like I said, a, a pair, I mean a, a brass knuckles or blaster knuckle of, of sorts, you know, a teched out blaster knuckle of sorts. And it's beautiful and you see the handle folds out and you just literally put it in his hand and he can actually use it and it, it sits the way it needs to sit so he can deliver the punch and it's it's fun to use it makes sense and it doesn't feel like you know after a couple uses it's gonna fall apart and just die you know what I mean because some accessories have that kind of feel to them where you're like man this shit's not gonna survive a handful of, uh, of uses I'm looking at you storm collectibles um, now this is the Fi's Edge. In the show, uh, this is the sword, uh, you know, accessory that he uses. It's essentially the handle of one of it's the handle of one of the handles of Autovagin, which is his bike. Um, you can kind of see it here. I get up close onto it later, but uh, yeah, it, he pulls that out and it extends, and he has essentially a baton to fight with. This also, um, in the original versions, and I'll show you this later on, it, it uses the mission memory, but this version does not. Um, there are a couple of extensions for it and effect parts so that you can make it light up and all that stuff. Um, it's, it's a nice, nice little set, you know? If, if you look at the old ones, this is one of the older ones. You see the spot for the mission memory and you see the mission memory. Um, you don't need that with this one. But here's the comparison to Autovagin from the SIC line. And you can see that the handle looks pretty much the same. Here's the sword all on its own. If you look closely, there are little telltale signs that it does more than just play the role of, you know, sword. But you can take off the blade and switch it out with the alternate blades that are, you know, uh, included in the pack. Um, if you look at his arms, though, he has that peg hole. The peg hole get, uh, fits the peg from the actual edge itself. And then it has one extra step, which I'm going to get into in just a second. The peg is sitting in an area that actually moves so that you can transform the edge from just a sword to somewhat of a connected uh, blade in his wrist, or you can, you know, have it blade up or blade down. Um, but yeah, you you slide that down the handle, and then you can attach that to Fize's wrists, 
and then he can fight with the blade on his wrists instead of in his hands and you can you know kind of pull off a, a baraka ish kind of uh kind of look or approach i guess you know for his combat or you could reverse it and he can have kind of a vampy kind of uh if you don't remember that it was a comic from the 2000s um a, a, it was like the manga version of vampirella uh it uh, you can kind of go for that kind of tonfa ish blade uh you know look and feel uh, i like it i like I, you know me if you give me options that's a plus you know forget all that nonsense that um what's his name dan larson was saying about the shf uh, uh darth maul having too many options you give me options that makes me happy because that way all of us can do different things with the figures that we get the more options, the better, especially if they're well engineered. Everything fits tightly. You have no issues here. I love it. Here's a little bit more comparison, though. These are the weapons standard, the way they look um, in the in the show uh, and all the subsequent shows with uh, the SH figure arts. So this was the first uh, Fies figure. And you see they give you extras to, to accomplish those uh, variations, transformations, and such. Um, here are so many of the other uh, versions, you know, with the smallest one being the SIC Kiwami Tamashi. And you see how with SIC, you get less parts, but the parts can be used together so that you can achieve all the different transformations. Um, Super RHF is not concerned with all that shit because it's about playability. All the weapons are a little gummier. They want the things to last. They want you to be able to play with them and not break them, you know? Now, let's get into the piece de resistance, the piece of, of resistance. <laughs> um, so let's talk about the gear case. You can see lines. You know something's up. You know, it does something more than just stand there. And it doesn't just open, you know? There are weapons hidden inside of this thing, but you transform it essentially and you go into what is called enhanced mode now enhanced mode is where the case enhances all of the standard weapons with the exception of the Fi's edge so you have the uh standard uh Fi shot oh, i'm sorry Fi's pointer and you can combine it with a part from the uh gear case and you end up with the enhanced Fies pointer and this thing is beefy and looks like you could blow up this you, you could shoot off the side of a building with this shit it looks like you could take out a tank if you kicked it with this thing um i love it i love it and it's so much detail and just the fact that it's so beefy i was just like what the fuck the first time i saw this i was like is this a custom because i remember seeing artwork someone did of Fies looking like something out of one of the newer Mega Man games, you know? At least at that time. It was like the mid-2000s or something. And then now seeing this fully realized, I'm just like, damn. This is, um, this is legit. This is literally like him taking on Kaiju with this giant-ass box on his leg. And he can actually perform his rider kick and do, you know, blow off limbs and shit. I love it. I love it. This is the stuff that, like, just seeing it. It gives you a story in your head, you know? And it doesn't look out of place, you know? The screen, I could imagine that top part close to his knee, it has like a touch screen that he could hit and designate targets and maybe, you know, zoom in on several targets, find their weak points, and then program it to allow him to hit those weak points, you know? It just, I don't know, power levels might show up on there. He could actually increase or decrease the power that he wants to use of the kick but I like it a lot it works for me in ways that I didn't know I needed <laughs> this thing to, to, to work you know I didn't know I needed an upgraded Fies pointer but now that I have it I'm like damn this shit is awesome now the Fies shot same deal you take the Fies shot and you combine it with a piece from the Fies uh, gear case um, and you could just imagine this. I tried to visualize this for you to make it as cinematic as possible. You see him cock his arm back 
and then you know it's charging up it's making all the sounds and shit um and then poof it turns into the enhanced mode look at that shit it's beautiful enhanced five shot fucking beautiful i'm telling you a different class of figure folks um so you can see this looks like a fist it sits over his hand and you don't have to remove the small five shot this actually connects to the five shot and the mission memory doesn't have to be in the five shot to do so you actually are better off leaving the mission memory out because it connects on that port but this would give more wallop to his punch you know more power to that punch allowing him to floor again some kaiju sized thing and you know do more damage pull more weight and i love it mm -hmm. i fucking love it it's one of the best little details that i've seen on you know these kinds of figures um i'm 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 impressed you know i'm impressed i've i've been impressed with this thing but the the further we go down the rabbit hole with this figure the more impressed i get it's just a beautiful figure well done figure with lots of detail and lots of uh i don't know just lots of 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 well done well thought out engineering and you know lots of little gimmicks and tricks that make sense now the last gimmick you see these these uh hinges on his shoulders there is a mode that he has in the series called axle mode and it's where he essentially opens up and becomes faster you know he has like intakes in his chest and uh his chest opens up and you kind of see the core of the system, the Fi's gear system. And it allows him to move at like ridiculously fast speeds. I mean, he pretty much becomes a speedster. Uh, he's on par with Kabuto, who is the speedster of the, 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 the Kamen Riders, essentially. Um, so with, with some finagling, you can open up his chest. And this isn't like a separate torso, like a new torso or something like that. The whole time... The rest of the review, I was, the whole time I was going through the rest of the review, this chest is the chest that he has. Those things, you don't get another pair that you can, you know, put in the upward position. This is how he is. He always has that transformation ability. Stock. There's nothing else you have to do. And it imitates what you see in the background, the Fi's axle mode. I mean, what the fuck? And lastly... So we have the phone. The phone needs an enhanced mode, right? And we definitely have an enhanced mode. So we, the last bits that you have left of the uh, gear case turn into this elongated thing with some folding and some turning of some dials. You will end up with another piece de resistance, you know, that I love. It's it's my favorite part of all this next to the axle mode you see how when you twist it you end up popping out the handle which is pretty dope and you realize what it is um i love this because it's a simple thing it was in the show and it worked really well and this is the enhanced phone blaster this thing is a beast um it's definitely reminiscent of the blaster uh that he uses in blaster mode in the TV show, which, you know, Figure Arts did a version of, SIC also did a version of it too. I just prefer to show you what it's supposed to look like via the show. But this red version of him is blaster mode. Um, and that's when this, you know, he has another piece, it's called a console that turns into that gun. Whereas here, they made the case turn into the gun. There's no console involved. Um, I would imagine if they do a blaster mode, they're going to do the console itself. And the gun will probably be even crazier. But, I mean, can you believe this shit? I mean, look at how much you got from the case alone. You know? And that's one accessory. And the way it's all integrated, it's like, what? This just, I just, it's nothing but kudos, man. Nothing but kudos. It's just impressive, 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 man. Man. And now the time has come for my favorite part, 
the bottom line. So you and I all know that Fize has been my favorite for as long as I can remember. He's he's just something about the design, the colors, the way everything works. I mean, there, it gets a little out there when you start talking about the Orphanox, but you could tell they were a little inspired by uh, X-Men and all that, having uh, an alternate type of human that, you know, people don't understand and they fear. You know, aside from that part, just the figures that come out, the design, the integration of the weapon systems into the suit. This is a master class of all the things that I preach when talking about making characters, when uh, staying true to the original, uh, you know, the, the, the integrity of the original design and the theme, because he still got the bug eyes. He hasn't moved too far away from cyborg, you know, fighting superhero with a bug motif. He still got the bug motif. And he's not a cyborg, but he still has mechanical, you know, elements to his design that make you still recognize him as a common rider. And then he rides a bike that does crazy shit. But, you know, just just having another addition to the Fies collection, my Fies collection, and then seeing how they've integrated all those things that I already loved about this character, and they just enhanced everything, literally. It, it just... It, it blows my mind at how well they did it, and I can't help but geek out about what they've done. This is an amazing figure. Um, it's expensive. It's it's pretty expensive. I think I paid about 120 for this figure, and so it's my most expensive Fies figure to date, and it's one of my most expensive figures, but um, I just couldn't pass it up, man. I was like... I, 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 number one, I was at a hobby store where they actually had it. Number two, it's Fies, and I haven't messed with anything Fies related other than the stuff I already have. And you know, seeing another take on the the, the design, you know what I mean, and seeing another take on the engineering, that works for me. That I can live with. This is not multiverse bullshit. This is how do we refine an already well thought out design and you just end up with something beautiful they said all the things that we made dirty and dingy with Kenji Ando's take let's make it shiny and beautiful a la Iron Man and it works it works it works better this way because this still feels more um, accurate to what we saw in the show you know it's more along the lines of what we saw in the show but enhanced and it's along the lines of shit that we love. Like when you see him with the Kamen Rider, you know, with uh, 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 Takeshi Hondo, the um, Kamen Rider 1, you really can see what I'm talking about. Obviously, his, his details are a little bit more exaggerated because he's got more tech. The tech is not all just infused in his body. It's, it's a suit with weapons, whereas Takeshi was the weapon. You know, he's a cyborg soldier. You still get that feel. You know, the mouth plate, the crazy looking eyes, the protrusions on the head instead of antennas. Like, you get it. You know what I'm saying? And I love that. This is why I collect from this line. Now, not everything appeals to me in this line, so I don't buy everything. And I'm never, I've never been one of those people where I feel like I have to have the whole line in order to make it world worthwhile to have one of the figures. No. And I think, you know, for people who are interested in, in, in Kamen Riders, you should pick the ones you like. You don't have to get all of them to make the whole thing. That's not how the, that world works. They each exist in their own world, you know. There's crossovers, don't get me wrong, but sometimes the crossovers, most of the time, especially in the recent era of Kamen Rider, the Heisei era, they're, I think now they're considering what, where we are now is the, the Neo Heisei era. Things are a little too crazy, so, you know, cherry pick. But if you are a Fies fan, this figure is going to blow you away because it met all my expectations and then some. And, and this is no bullshit. It, it, it meets all my expectations when it comes to paint, sculpt. I mean, look at how clearly you can see every piece of this figure. Every detail on that suit. Even small spots where there's little bits of red. It's like 
wow, you guys actually thought about it and you said, we're gonna make sure the whole thing looks good, you know? From the, from the red spots where the photon blood flows through the costume or the armor or the suit to the uh, exhaust ports on his hips and on his shoulders to the, all the little technical details throughout all the accessories. They just went ham and everything fit and it feels right. It feels like the next step, you know? Little details like in his head, you can see it here at the bottom of the helmet on the back of his head. There's a little hinge in there so that when you turn his head up, that kind of folds under the helmet. Little details to make the figure work well. And then also he works perfectly with Autovagin. I have no issues with him. This bike is huge. Um, it transforms and I didn't transform it. I didn't show you a, um, uh, you know, comparison with him next to that bike. I mean, I can tell you that the transfer, the robot mode is ginormous with this bike, but it's ugly, which is why I didn't, I didn't do anything with it. It's not my favorite. I actually prefer the standard one, which if you have the super RHF, he's too big for that, uh, for that bike. So while I could have shown him on the bike, I figured that'd be too embarrassing. I was like, let me just show him standing next to standard Autovagin. And there he is. Um, you can see he's a little taller than Autovagin, where in the, the actual show, Autovagin is like a head and shoulders taller than him. So these two, these two figures, I mean, if you have the, that bike and this is the, the, the particular thighs that you have, make it work, you know what I mean? But, um, size wise and scale wise they don't necessarily work together like they should but this figure is an amazing figure and there's not very many limits to what you can do with him and there's not very many limits uh to what he can do considering who he is and what the character is supposed to do and this is what figures are all about especially figures that are based on a tv show or something else so i give this figure an s plus this is like cream of the crop this is the best kind of shit this is exactly what you want from figures you know so with that this has been my look at the superior imaginative coliseum common rider 555 fies from bandai um still holding it down even though sh figure arts has been sucking it up lately um but yeah these this figure is amazing and that's my story and I'm sticking to it. So um, as always, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for listening. Um, I know this one was a bit of a long one, but I have a passion for this character. And anytime I got a passion for something, I can talk about it. And I'm going to let you know all the things I need to let you know so that you get it. And, you know, maybe when you talk about this in the future, you guys will have, you know, examples to change your perspective on the concept of what is a perfect figure. You know, if you're going to say a figure's imperfect because it has articulation and gaps, then, you know, you're you're not doing a good job uh, appraising the figure. If you're just looking for a good example, you know, that it does everything it's supposed to do masterfully, here you go. So anyway, that's it for me. You guys have been great. Peace outside. <laughs>